we're going to be making a grain matched white oak floating mantle. And the reason I'm making it is because my friend couldn't get it cheaply at a big box store. So I'm using wood sourced for my cabinet shop. Right now we're just milling the lumber, getting it straight on all the edges so we can glue things together. This will be made out of solid white oak and no plywood involved on this project. Except for maybe the spacers on the inside. As you can see, it looks like I need to re-wax the wings on my joiner. Now we are just cutting everything down to size and we'll be taking it over to the table saw here soon to add a little more features. Well, I think I cut it the right size. Oh wait, I'm still figuring out what length I want to cut out of this piece. Hmm. I think I've got it. Oop, and there I'm getting in the way of the shot again. Make it flat. Almost done cutting pieces now. Soon we're going to head to the table saw to cut the 45 degree angle. And one last cut. Here we go on the table saw. As you can see, I've made a couple practice cuts first. And in hindsight, I should have put a sharp blade on this because the blade is so dull I'm having to use extra force to push the boards through. Also, we're using the Jessam stock guides, which really help to pull the material against the table saw fence. And it's through. It would have been much easier with a sharp blade. And although I do have a saw stop, which will stop the blade if my fingers come in contact with it, I would recommend putting a sharp blade on before you do anything of this sort. Now here is where I really need to make a sliding table saw sled for my table saw because this is not the best way to cut 45 degree bevels on the end of a board this wide, at least not with this miter saw. You can watch me struggle here for a bit. Oh 
All right, now we begin to put stuff together. I'm glad that is over with. It's time to start fitting the boards together in the best possible orientation. As you can see, these boards were surfaced on three sides when I bought them, but they are not incredibly flat. So it took a little bit of doing to get everything to line up properly. Lining up, looks straight to me. Guess we'll put it together. Now we're gonna begin taping these boards together so that when we flip them over to start adding glue, they will stay nicely lined up and the tape will act as a clamp when we fold them up and hold them tightly together to make as seamless of joints as possible. In hindsight, I probably should have used a little more tape. As you can see, when we flip this over, one came loose and the other one came loose. I don't know why I was trying to put those on right away anyhow. And now we add the glue. The glue is something too that I should have had a big glue brush for and brushed it in a lot faster because until we got all the glue spread in with my fingers, um, it was starting to set up a little bit, but it turned out all right in the end. I'm not quite sure why I thought I needed to put the end caps on right away but that's what I did. Fold it up and add a piece of tape across the top to hold things together. And we used a Milwaukee pin nailer to hold the ends in place. That is a tool I use about the most in my shop right now. And as you'll soon see, we used a lot of pin nails on this because those boards did not line up like I thought they should have. Also in hindsight, if I would have used a little more tape and a few clamps, I think I would have used a lot less pin nails. I wish I would have counted how many we used. As you can see, we used a lot. Now, this shot here is the beginning of sanding and we have put on some wood filler to fill in all the little pin nail holes and to fill in the cracks on the seams where there was any. I found the best way to sand is to use a pencil and scribble across the wood and by the time you get the pencil marks all sanded off, you know you've made it through. To where you need to be with that grit. Then we move on to the next grit and scribble again. I believe on this project we used 120 to start with and moved up to 220 and then to 320. We 
we used the Festool Rotex for this. It's hooked up to a Milwaukee uh, dust extraction unit and the Rotex works great for the first stages of sanding where you're removing more material and getting through the grits faster. It works very good. We'll switch to the Merca Heroes soon for the last and final sandings. Where I was using the little torch right there, it was to try to harden up that wood filler a little quicker and it worked good for that. the sanding took longer on this project than anything else. We did leave the sides a little long and we will trim them off before the customer comes to pick it up. Also the one benefit to the fest tool, at least I have right now a hard sanding pad on there which takes off all the high spots and low spots. It doesn't conform to the uh, high and low spots as much and the Merca Duros has a softer pad on it which conforms to the lower spots more so. It works best for a mantle like this where you want it flat and clean lines to use the Rotex first to get your first initial sanding done. Here we're doing more scribbling and just a quick sand with 320 and then pretty soon we'll water pop this so that when they apply stain and finish it won't raise the grain and cause a very rough uneven surface. And I also use a Leatherman all the time from sharpening knives to adjusting the tools or whatever I need to do it works great. I carry one with me and I don't know what I would do without it. Here I'm breaking over the edges just so they're not sharp. And here we go to water pop it. I know that a spray bottle with water in it just to spritz it on would work a lot better, but I did not have one. I still don't have one actually, and so we just use a blue shop towel dipped in water to water pop our uh, projects. Just give it a quick wipe and it'll raise that grain up to where you can sand it off very easily with 320 again and it'll be ready for stain and finish after we sand it the next time. This also gives a preview of what it will look like with some finish on it. I think it will turn out to be a very nice looking mantle. You notice the rag sticking there? It's because it's raising the grain when you rub it against the grain it really likes to stick because it's pulling those little fibers up.
And here's the finished pictures. It turned out very nice, I think. There's a couple spots where you can see the seam didn't line up the greatest, but once it gets a stain on there, I don't believe you'll be able to see it. And this is sanded at 320 and water popped and sanded again. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.